This time on Burnouts and Rotor Blades, the Vega gets a sway bar. Roll the intro. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. Well, it's time to put a sway bar on our 1972 Chevy Vega. I tried to do it before and... Unfortunately, I think we might have to save the sway bar for another time because I have to create mounts that go up underneath. And I just couldn't wrap my head around how to attach one. I'm not willing to blow money on a whole aftermarket setup. So in the spirit of the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel, I'm gonna do it the cheapest way I possibly can. This is a 2001 Chevy Blazer Eston Extreme rear sway bar, which mounts exactly up to the 2001 S10 Extreme rear end that we just put in our Chevy Vega. So now it's time to make the two up. Now in stock form, these two things do not made up. And in fact, I ordered some parts that won't work, so don't pay attention to that. So we're gonna have to do some modification, and I think we're gonna have to do the most of the modification to this uh, sway bar as opposed to the actual car itself. Any ideas? Some of the options that I tossed around were welding up sway bar in link connectors to the body, um, but since the since it's so thin under there, I decided against that for the simple fact that I didn't want to have to do a ton of welding and reinforcing to the floor. I want as close to a bolt-in option as humanly possible. So that's what we're shooting for today. To connect the sway bar to the body, I bought these UTV lowering links from Amazon. Oh, shiza. What? Well, I almost just stabbed myself in the eye. Yes, it is. It's a bad word in German. In order to make this work, we ended up cutting about six inches off the end of our sway bar. We machined down the ends to flat surfaces on each side so that the heim joint eccentric washers would have room to sit flat up against the surface of the sway bar. After that, we drilled a small hole just above the sway bar so that our end link had a place to mount to. Now we chose a position that had double thickness metal so that it would be less likely to try to pull through the floor of the Vega. Now, if I was gonna do this again, I would order a much shorter end link. You can order motorcycle lowering sets that are about two inches and it's just one male heim joint into a female heim joint. And you could have easily put it right here. If I was to do it all over again, I might consider putting it right here and then not shortening this bar so much. The advantage of that is you don't lose as much mechanical advantage. What I've done with this one, shortening it as much as I have and moving the, the, the mount point back is I've lowered the mechanical advantage the car has over the sway bar twist, 
making this effectively a much stronger sway bar. That may come back to bite me in the butt, uh, and if that happens, I'll end up moving it forward and trying another sway bar. But honestly, I want the back of this to be really, really stiff, and that's okay with me. it shouldn't it shouldn't lock that even more so that it yeah. should it should lock but yeah I think that this rear end is not just just not the best locking rear end oh no don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more like it and as always thanks for watching <laughs>